is a joy to be here tonight. Amen. Amen. I'm excited to be in this place. Hallelujah. God's going to do some great things. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, God's going to do some great things. Amen. And then tell your neighbor one of the great things is he's going to get you to smile. Amen. See, he already did it. Hallelujah. He already got into work. Amen. Praise God. It is a joy to be here. I honor Pastor Pounds. Can you help me honor Pastor Pounds? And I saw that glow in his eyes. He loves Tuesday nights. I mean, just loves Tuesday night. He's got that glow on him, like like he like he said he just got a new kid or something. Amen. And he's got, amen. Praise God. Amen. Got a bunch of them. Amen. And, and I mean, just the passion. Amen. You know what that lets me know? He's excited you're here tonight. Amen. Praise God. You ought to thank God for that. And then, and then, I saw Brother Godwin. Amen. Yeah. Yes. And that dude's like the Tasmanian devil. <laughs> Amen. Demon Slayer. Amen. I was like, my God have mercy. He's going a thousand miles per hour. This is this is crazy church tonight. Amen. I'm telling you, this has got to be the most exciting place in all high desert. Does anybody agree with me? Santo Dios de la Globa. Amen. One song. In one song, they did in one song what many churches can't do for a whole service. Amen. And that is usher in the presence of God and usher us to the presence of God. Aren't you glad you came to church tonight? God is going to break chains tonight. God is going to deliver somebody tonight. God is going to transform people. Hallelujah. This is a great time to be in church. Clap your hands to the Lord. Genesis chapter 6 verse 12 all the way to verse 14. And the word of the Lord says, And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. Watch this. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. Amen. I want you to hear that. All flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. It did not blame the devil. All right, amen. 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 You know, back back many years ago, there was like a like a, a Hollywood thing. The devil made me do it. Right. Yeah. Amen. And people just adapted that. Oh yeah. And yes, oh, it sir. was the devil that made me do it. Yeah. I I remember when I didn't do my homework. I told my teacher. I said it was the devil. <laughs> I said, teacher, I'm telling you right now, the devil, the devil held me back. I was distracted. It was Satan himself that didn't let me do my homework. One time I blamed that the dog ate my homework. Anybody ever use that one? Amen. But right here it says, for all flesh. Somebody say, I'm flesh. Yeah, you are. 
all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh is come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them. Once again, it's not blaming the devil. Right. And it's not blaming hell. Right. It's blaming humanity. Amen. Amen. Through them. And behold, I will destroy them from the earth. And then he says, make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shall thou make in the ark. And shall pitch it within and without. With and with pitch, without with pitch, amen. That's powerful. Yes, sir. God says there's so much corruption, there's so much perversion in the world, and there's so much violence. He said, I'm gonna destroy mankind. But this is where his mercy is at. He says, make you an ark. Because in the middle of all that, God still had a place for salvation. Amen. 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 That's his mercy. Yeah. That even though the world might be full of corruption, God still has a place of yeah. salvation. Amen. And the church is the ark. Amen. Hallelujah. The church is the ark. I want you to tell your neighbor, say, the church is the ark. Are you going to help me preach tonight? About three of you said something. Hallelujah. You're going to help me preach tonight. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. You are powerful, mighty. You are awesome. You are in this place tonight. And you are here, oh God, because you're going to minister to people. Nobody is here by mistake, God. You brought everybody to this house. By the power of the name of Jesus, I pray, God, that every distraction be taken away. Every wandering mind will be captivated by your word. Every wandering thought will be captivated by your word. I command every tormenting spirit to leave now in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, I declare the power of God to break every chain in this house. In Jesus' name. Now somebody clap your hands to the Lord and give God the praise in the house. Give God the praise in the house. You may be seated in the presence of Almighty God. We live in a world full of lawlessness. Yes, sir. Amen. Yeah. I feel that more than ever before, we are literally seeing a decay of a nation, and not only a nation. But worldwide, there is a decay. There is a, a crumbling down, if you will. A disregard to what is uh, law and authority. Right, right. Come on. A rebellion that is rising up. And it's amazing because whenever there is a rebellion that rises up, Everything else goes in line with it. Yeah. That is all of a sudden where, where, where places become polarized. Right. Where there's the divisions and the, and the splits. And, and because you're not my color, then, then I must have to hate you. Right, right. Amen. Yeah, yeah. All of that is a reflection of the decaying of a society. Right. Yeah, Amen. Come on. When there is no respect one for another. Right, there on. is no respect towards life. Amen. Amen. And I believe that all of that is seeded in a lawless uh, generation and a lawless people that right. have rised up. Yeah. Where they have no knowledge.
hands of God, no conscience towards God, don't have any lines uh, uh, of limitations of perversion in their lives. So therefore, uh, human life is not regarded with respect uh, because it is uh, a lack of respect. I believe that what America needs is a revival of obedience. Amen. 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 Revival of obedience. I, I heard a person say that, that the best teacher is uh, experience. Well, I beg to differ. Because do you want your child to learn by experience or by obedience crossing the road? Wow. Amen. Amen. That's good. If it's by experience, they might not survive the experience. Right. If it's just go ahead, go ahead and cross the street and we'll see how it goes. He might not make it across the street. Amen. But there's something powerful about obedience. Because when obedience steps in, you teach them, you look to your right, you look to your left, you look again, and if it's clear, then you cross the road. Praise God. See, we live in a lawless society where there's a disobedience to anything that represents order. Amen. Praise God. And the only thing that that does is it brings chaos. That's right. It brings Amen. violence. Amen. Why are we seeing more riots than what we've seen before? Why is there so much disrespect? There is lies upon lies. You don't even know who's telling the truth anymore. Because there's no more conscience in the world that we are living in today. Amen. Glory to God. And to live in a lawlessness in your life, it's literally living without control. That's right. Where your life is in a constant tailspin. Yes, sir. Everything is out of control because law brings order. Amen. Oh, glory. I thought somebody was going to say something. I said law brings order. See, we've become a spineless uh, society where we don't want to establish order anymore. Moms and dads not establishing order in the house anymore. Kids talking back to their parents uh, and, and, and the parents going into a meltdown acting like the kids uh, and the kids are dictating to the parents, oh my Lord, we are in a timeout generation. When I was growing up, it was I will knock you out generation. Praise God. Anybody know what I'm talking about? There was no timeout back in my day. It was I will knock you out. But it's taught us a respect towards what was law, what was order. Praise God. Somebody clap your hands to the Lord. The Bible says that the law is not made for the righteous man. It's not made for the righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient. Amen. Why? Because the law brings order to the one that's lawless. Right, right. It brings order to the one that's disobedient. Disobedience will bring cursing upon your life. Right. Disobedience will bring will bring bad things into your life. It will bring bondage into your life. There are people that are literally in a mess right now because of disobedience. Glory to God. Can I preach this tonight? Glory to God. And some folk might get mad at me. Well, go ahead. Hallelujah. It's all right because I'm preaching word of God tonight. You're going to have to get mad with God because this is word of God tonight. 
Elijah. Hallelujah. God established his word to be able to bring order into your life. And if your life is in chaos and your life is in cursings and your life is in a tailspin, I got good news for you tonight. You're in the right place because tonight you can start a new journey. Somebody clap your hands to the Lord. We are bound or set free by what we submit ourselves to. Yes, sir. Amen. Romans chapter 6 and verse 16. Know ye not that to whom you yield yourself servants to obey his servants ye are to whom ye obey whether in, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness all right that's right Come see on, see it, it's it's a choice that's it right is a choice yes, it is. amen that's right it's not the devil made me do it it's a choice It's not mama's fault and it's not daddy's fault. It's a choice. You choose for yourself whether you're going to follow the road of sin that leads to death or a road of obedience that leads to righteousness. Glory to God. Tell your neighbors, say, it's your choice. Praise God. The one that is to blame is the man or the woman in the mirror. Come on. Oh, glory. That was good all by itself. That was a tweet and a half. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Obedience changes everything. Come on. Amen. It changes everything. Yes. If you come under the, the obedience of God and, and follow his word, your life will be different. Amen. Your life will be completely changed. Yes. 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 Your family that you are losing right now, you're losing your family. Your family is falling apart. The moment you come and place yourself under the obedience of the word of God, order will come into your family. Order will come into your marriage. Order will come into your mind. Glory to God. Somebody give God praise right now. For God of mercy. So in a, in a lawless generation, all of a sudden God looks and he looks for a righteous man. And he finds Noah. And he speaks to Noah to do something absolutely crazy. Yes, sir. Amen. And that is, Noah built thee an ark. Noah's like, what? What for? He wasn't even close to the ocean. They had never seen a drop of rainfall. Right. Come on. Hallelujah. But that's where obedience settled in. Yes. Amen. Yeah, come yes. On. Amen. And I want you to know something. That obedience settled in when society was literally attacking him for what he was doing. Right. Sometimes obedience will cause you to walk against the current. Glory to God. All your homies, all your posses, all your whatever. Amen. They want to go and do all the crazy stuff. But obedience tells you, I got to break away from these guys. I got to break away from these people because they're going to hell, but I want to go to heaven. Praise God. And there will be people that will call you crazy. Let them call you crazy all they want. But you can dance when you get to heaven. You can shout on the streets of gold. Why? Because I'm being obedient to the word of God. Somebody clap your hands. So God 
says, build thee an ark, and he gave Hallelujah. him the specs and everything uh, of what he needed to do. This is what is amazing to me, is that God said, I, I am literally disgusted with humanity. God was ready to destroy humanity completely. Right. Come on. Wipe us all out. Yes. Right. Amen. Yes, but then his mercy. Mercy. Well, come on. come on. His mercy saw one man that was righteous. Yes. What would happen in your family? Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. Amen. What would happen in your family? Come on. You might say, well, I'm the only one that's going to serve the Lord. Well, that one right. might be the salvation for your family. Oh. Praise God. You might be all by yourself and people making fun of you, but you keep on being obedient. You keep on being obedient. You keep on getting closer to God and eventually, i got to declare to somebody, your family will be saved. Your family will be delivered. Somebody give God praise in that. So, and so he begins to build an ark. Hallelujah. And, and you might ask, well, well, what's the ark today? The church is the ark. Come on. Come on, that's right. Amen. Because God will always have a place where you can come and have an encounter with Him. Amen. And so God has a church. That's right. In the middle of the times that we are living in, God has a church. This is the church. Oh, let me put it this way. This is the ark. you glad you're in the ark tonight? The ark was a place of refuge. And the church is a place of refuge. Because there were storms going on on the outside. Right. And it was flooding on the outside. Right. And chaos on the outside. But on the inside there was peace. Yeah. Yeah. On the inside it was it was tranquility. Yeah. On the inside there was no chaos. Right. And there are some folks tonight uh, that you've been living in the midst of chaos. You've been in a storm of your life. Uh, you've been going through hell and high water. You've been battling Satan on every side. Uh, and battling against this and that. Uh, but God brought you to this place tonight. Uh, because in this place, uh, there is peace uh, that passes all understanding. Oh, glory, I wish I had somebody in this place. I said there's peace that passes all understanding. Somebody clap your hands. You come in a place like this all of a sudden your soul begins to feel different yes. and the reason why it begins to feel different is because you're feeling the peace and the love of God that's coming upon you there's some of you that you're here tonight and you're saying I feel so warm that's the love of God that's the love of God The ark is a place of refuge. Yes. Who, Lord? Thank you, Jesus. A place of refuge. Place of refuge. Yeah. Where you could come into the church and your soul begin to rest. Amen. Amen. In his presence. Amen. Oh, that, that in, in your presence there's fullness of joy. Hallelujah. Yes. There's joy in this place. Amen. Maybe you're living Amen. around depression, but there's joy, joy. Come on. joy Amen. in this place. Amen. Come on. Maybe you've been under oppression in your life, but there's joy in this yes. place. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Joy on 
unspeakable yeah. and full of glory. Yeah. It's in this place. Hallelujah. Yeah. And God, God brought you. I don't know how many thousands of people live in this city. And out of all those thousands, God pointed at you today. And he said, I want you to come into my presence. That's the love of God. You ought to thank God for that. Somebody ought to thank God for that. a place of refuge but the ark was also a place of salvation right, 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 right. salvation in Genesis chapter 7 verse 1 and the Lord said unto Noah come thou in all thy house into the ark for thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation yeah, come on. because of his obedience he was able to not only save himself, but right. save his family. family. Come on. Yes. Yes. Amen. 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 Your decision tonight is not only just for you, right. but it's going to affect your family. Amen. It's going to affect your kids. Right. It's going to affect everybody that's around you. Hallelujah. Because all of a sudden, in a dark world, they're going to see the light of Jesus in your eyes. Yeah. Glory to God. I said they're going to see the light of Jesus in your eyes. Somebody clap their hands. The Bible, the Bible says in verse Peter chapter 7 chapter 3 and verse 20 to those who were obedient long ago when God waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was being built uh, in, in, in only few people eight in all were saved through water and this symbolizes uh, baptism uh, that now saves also, right. saves you also. He says, he says, they were saved uh, in the ark. Right. But now your salvation uh, comes through baptism. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Baptism in the name of Jesus. Yes. See, you've got to be baptized in Jesus' name. Yes, right. You've got to repent before the presence of God. Right. Right. Yes. Repentance is saying, God, forgive me of my sins. Yes. yes. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm sorry for sinning. Come on. I'm sorry for what I've done before your presence. Right. And being disobedient. Amen. The first step for obedience is repentance. Right. Amen. It's where you're asking God for mercy. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. You're saying, God, forgive me of my sins. Thank you, Jesus. And see, this is the thing. A lot of people uh, have asked God to forgive them, but they don't get baptized. Right. Yeah, yeah come on. Right. And so they walk around with the stain of sin on their life. Come on, man. Yeah, come on. Man. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, a few years ago, when I first moved to the United States of America, because I used to live in Latin America. I lived in Latin America all my life. And uh, when we moved to the United States, moved <coughs> to Dallas, Texas, um, I wanted to do everything American. Amen. We even planted a garden. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. I didn't. Hey man, I didn't know. I, I grabbed the watermelon seeds and I lined them all up right next to each other. Man, we had a mess. <laughs> we didn't even get a watermelon because it was just, it was, oh Lord, I had the carrots and everything. My, my garden was like, just like five by five, amen. And we had everything, carrots, celery, strawberries, watermelon, nothing came out. No. <laughs> Everything was killing each other. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> and so one day I went and I got my kids the color chalk. The kind that they used to be able to draw on the concrete. You know what I'm talking about. 
And I told my kids, I said, go ahead. I said, kids, because that day we were going to have some important people come to our house. And I said, kids, I want you to only write and draw on the driveway, but not on the walls. Oh. Well. I should have said, draw on the walls and not on the driveway. <laughs> Amen. When I came back, the walls looked like a ship I was in the hood. <laughs> like some gang got a hold of it. Amateur gang. Amen. There was flowers and grass and butterflies all over the wall and nothing on the ground. <laughs> and so I, I arrive and I'm like, ooh, Lord, have mercy. I'm like fuming up in here. Praise God. But I didn't want to kill their creativity. You know? You don't want to kill the creativity for the love of Pete. Hallelujah. <laughs> and so I get out of the car and my kids even stand in front of the wall. They said, look, Papa. Yeah. <laughs> like, ta-da. And I'm like, yes, it's so beautiful. <laughs> When I start speaking Spanish really fast, it's dangerous. Hallelujah. Don't even ask me what I'm saying when I'm speaking fast. Amen. Praise God. And so I said to my kids, I said, I said, kids, I said, it looks beautiful. I said, but kids, I, I told you, not on the wall but on the concrete. My daughter, she very sensitive. She was about four years old. About four years old. She's 16 now. Amen. Amen. She's about four years old. And she goes, Oh, Papa, i sorry. Aww. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's where I was like, my heart just melted in that moment. And, and my boy's a little bit, you know, he's a, he, he, he's a boy. Amen? And he's like, oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, Papa. Oh, I'm sorry, Papa. You know what that was? That was repentance. Right. That was repentance. But the walls were still stained. Right. Right. Come on. And see, a lot of people have repented, but their, their life is still stained. Right, right, right. And the devil still sees those stains on your life. Right. And every time you try to get up, the devil says, oh, wait, wait, wait. You remember that sin? Why? Because he still sees it on your life. Right. Come on. Oh, this is good tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you know what I did? Because those guests were coming. I said, kids, uh, grab the hose. Uh, let's get a bucket with soap. Uh, let's get a brush or something. And we began to wash that. That's baptism. That's baptism. Uh, when you are baptized in the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus is applied to your life. Uh, and he washes all your sins away. Can I get a witness in the house of the Lord? Somebody that knows what I'm talking about ought to give God a praise right now. That's why the Bible says repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Then it says, and ye shall be filled with the Holy, Holy Ghost. Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. So the ark 
was a place of salvation. The church is a place of salvation. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. This is where God wants to wash your sins away. Hallelujah. Thank God. You don't Thank have God. to walk out of this place Amen. with the guilt of sin on your life. Right. Come on. Amen. There are some folks in this place. You've done some stuff and you don't know who you've done it with. Uh, and your mind is condemning you constantly. God brought you to this place uh, so that you can be free in your mind. He wants to free your spirit. Uh, hallelujah. I baptized one sister and then I baptized her and she came out of the water. She said to me, she said, Pastor, am I glowing? Amen. Am I glowing? And I said, sister, in your spirit you are. Why? Because when sin has been so strong on your life uh, and God wipes you clean, uh, you feel like you're glowing. You feel changed. Uh, you feel delivered. Uh, somebody's about to be delivered in this place tonight. Uh, can somebody give God praise in that? Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. We are new creatures in Christ Jesus. You all know what LCR was? It was a place of new beginnings. New beginnings, yes. Glory to God. A place of new beginnings. Let me tell you something. You've probably made some mistakes in your life. We all have. I get in line. I'm the first one right there. I've made some mistakes. And I beat myself over it. And then the Lord forgave me over it. Praise God. But we've made mistakes in our lives. There are things that we wish, man, if I could just start all over again. If I could just start all over again. If I could just... Start all over again. I've, I've made so many mistakes. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. Staples has this easy button. <laughs> <laughs> that you push it and the thing says that was easy. That was easy. <laughs> man, I went and bought me one. <laughs> I was like, man, this might work. Amen. <laughs> So I asked my son to cut the grass and I was waiting to push the easy button. <laughs> Nothing happened. Yeah. Hey Amen. Because, because humanly speaking, there is no easy button. Right. But God has a reset button. Yes. Thank God. Amen. Oh God. I said he's got a reset button. He'll make you brand new again. He'll make you a new person. He'll change you so much that even your homies won't even know who you are because God done done, done, done the change in your life. Hallelujah. You have an opportunity tonight to have a new beginning. New beginning. Jesus. Oh, Hallelujah. thank you, God. Fresh start. Praise God. You don't have to walk out being the same person. Right. Come on, Lord. Amen. Come on. Amen. Right. If you do, it's all on you. Yes. That's right. right. Yes. Can't blame anybody. That's, That's right. right. That's right. It's all on you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Maybe I've said this before, but I'm going to say it again. Amen. And if, I, if you've heard it, just act like this. If you know, praise God. Brand new. <laughs> Brand new. Brand new. Amen. Even, even say like, oh, <laughs> work with me. Hallelujah. We Praise God. Got we got okay, thank you. Amen. <laughs> I pastored in, in, in TJ. In fact, I think I just oh, said this amen. on Sunday. Amen. Hallelujah. I pastored in TJ. Tijuana. Amen. For some of you. And praise God. Some folks were like, TJ, Alaska? TJ, TJ, California? Where would you be? Mexico. Amen. 
Some of y'all that were in the service, you know, TJ. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I was pastoring in Tijuana, and uh, we were in the middle of a service, and all of a sudden, this person came in. Now, now you got to understand, I'm human. Anybody else human in the house? Oh, yeah. About three. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I'm glad I'm not alone. There's about three in here that are human. Amen. <laughs> and so, and so I, was, I, 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 I saw this person, and I was, I was a little confused. Because it was kind of like that song, Dude Looks Like a Lady type of deal. <laughs> where, where he had body structure of a man, but he was dressed like a woman. And I was like, Santo Dios de la Gloria. <laughs> now, I want you to understand something. God is not confused. That's right. Sin will confuse a person. Pain will confuse a person. Abuse in their childhood will confuse a person. But the God that made you will confirm your identity. Anybody believe that in this place tonight? And as a human, one of our faults is we jump to judgment. Yes, sir. Before we know the whole story. Come on. Yeah. We're quick to judge. And sometimes, once we've been in church for a while. Well, come on. We get our holy scanner out. <laughs> And when somebody walks in, we're like, mm -hmm. and we disqualify people because they don't look like us. Well, come on. Come on. But what we disqualify, God qualifies. Yeah. What we disqualify, the blood of Jesus qualifies. God. And so, and so I, I preached, and when I made the altar call, the only one that passed up to the altar was that dude. Wow. Wow. I was like, anybody else needs prayer? <laughs> oh, no. I was like, Two prayers for the price of one. <laughs> Some of y'all just got freaked out. Are they going to charge for prayer? <laughs> we got promotion tonight on prayer. It's free tonight. Hallelujah. You came on a good night. It's free tonight. We'll pray for you free. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Man, I was like, Anybody need prayer for your dog? Man, nobody's going. I said, you need God to take your mother-in-law away. The whole church came up. <laughs> Even the little kids that didn't have mother-in-law, they were like, <laughs> free me from now, God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now I got some mother-in-laws mad at me. Amen. <laughs> and so people came to the altar. Remember, remember, I am human. Right. Yeah. And so I started praying for people on this side. And I get all the way over here. And I'm right next to this young man. And God lets me hear his prayer. Hallelujah. Come on now. And when I heard his prayer, Hallelujah. come on. The preacher had to repent. Because I realized that I was in the wrong. Yes. Amen, amen. Because behind all of that, there was a broken soul right. that needed God. Yes. Yes. And his, his, prayer, his prayer was this.
if you don't touch me, who's going to touch me? And if you don't change me, who's going to change me? Jesus. He said, you're my last Hallelujah. hope. Wow. You're my last hope. When I heard that, I, tears started coming down my cheeks. And I stood in front of the young man. I said, young man, open your heart and just ask God to forgive you of your sins. And yes. he just starts weeping. Oh, God, please have mercy on me. Forgive me of my sins. Yes. And in that moment, Pastor, I felt the Holy Ghost on him. Amen. See, inside of every man and every woman, there is a void. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's an emptiness. Yes. Yes. Right. You can't and that void belongs to the presence of God. Amen. Right. Yes. And the reason why Amen. people will fall into addictions is because they're trying to fill that hole that's in the inside. Amen. But the only thing that can fill that is the Holy Ghost. And when the Holy Ghost comes and fills that hole in your life, all of a sudden you feel fulfilled. You have purpose because God filled that void in your life. So I told this young man, I said, young man, the Holy Ghost is on you. And I said, God's going to fill you with the Holy Ghost right now. And you're going to begin to speak in tongues. Hallelujah. I said, now lift your hands and begin to worship. And he lifted his hands. He began to say, hallelujah, hallelujah. And I said, by the authority of the word of God and by the power of the name of Jesus, be filled with the Holy Ghost now Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. Within seconds. This young man began to speak in tongues. God filled him with the Holy Ghost. That's a powerful God that we serve. Hallelujah. And then, then after he, would be, he was in the altar for a while, he comes to me and he says, Pastor, he says, he says, can I be baptized? Oh, yeah. I'm like, yeah. like how, how do you know about baptism? He said, he said, uh, well, when I was a child, my mama took me to Sunday school. Wow. And my mama taught me that if you ever get baptized, you got to do it in the name of Jesus. Yeah. He, said, he said, Pastor, I, I want to know, do you baptize in the name of Jesus? You're in the right place, I said. Yeah. I said, that's the only way we baptize, because that's the only way you should be baptized. There is no other name uh, given unto men under heaven, given to men, whereby we must be saved. It's the name of Jesus. He said, he said, well, can I be baptized? I said, buddy, you already asked God to forgive you. God already filled you with the Holy Ghost. I said, absolutely, you need to be baptized. Amen. Amen. He said, okay. So we gave him a baptismal robe. He went, got changed, came back, put him in the water. Now let me remind you again, God's not confused. That's Come on. right. Man. Come on. Sin Amen. will confuse a man. Come on. Amen. Right. Right. Brokenness will confuse. Yes, but God's right. not confused. That's That's right. Right. And so all of a sudden, when I went to baptize him, I said, I baptize you now in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sins. When I put him back in the water, his wig stayed in the water. His makeup melted off of his face. The man that I put in the water was confused. But the one that came out of the water was made at the image of God. That's what God does. He will change you completely. Somebody can go crazy. When he came out of the water, we gave him man pants. <laughs> Not none of this, you know. Amen. Skinny stuff. <laughs> My God of mercy is so skinny they can't even walk right. 
I'm like, come on, son. Walk like a man. Praise God. Hallelujah. Gave him a man shirt, man shoes. We even gave him a coat. If the FBI was looking for him, when he walked out, they wouldn't have been able to find him. That's the change that happened. And he came. I said, see, he came to me afterwards. He said, can you pray for me? I said, yeah, what do you need? He said, the reason why I was dressed the way I was, he said, is because I came to be able to cross the border to be able to reach the American dream. He said, I couldn't cross, and I began to get hungry. He said, and I started to sell my body on the streets. He said, and for 10 years, I have lived that life. He said, I have AIDS. I only have a few months to live. He said, I'm dying. He said, and I know that the wages of sin is death. He said, I know that. He said, but I, I'm just going to ask one, one request. I said, what's that? He said, tomorrow I'm going to the doctor for them to extend my medication. He said, because I ran out of medication. He said, with that medication, I get about three more months of life. He said, I want those because I want to go back home Come on. and show my family what God has done in my life. <laughs> to hear this I told this young man I said young man I believe that if your repentance was genuine yeah. then in the waters of baptism yeah. not only did God take your sins away Come on. Yeah. but he also took your sickness yeah. 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 because I believe that if you've got the sickness that you got because of being crazy in the world. Come Amen. Right. In the waters of baptism. God not only delivers you of sin. Right. But he takes that sickness out of your body. Because the Bible says old things have passed away. Behold all things are become new. Somebody ought to shout about that. So we prayed for him. Then the next day he went and they drew some blood and they said, come back at four o'clock in the afternoon. He came back at four and they said, sir, we've had some complications. We need to draw some more blood. Poor dude was skinny. <laughs> Amen. He's like, okay. They said, come back tomorrow. Came back the next day and said, Sir, we really apologize. We've been having some difficulties. And we need to draw some more blood. He said, Okay. So they drew more blood. They said, Come back later on in the afternoon. When he came back in the afternoon, they immediately ushered him in to a room full of doctors. And the doctor looked at him and said, Sir... We don't know how to explain it to you, but we have not found any trace of AIDS in your blood. My God is a healer. I said my God is a healer. And if he could do that for that young man, he can do anything for you. Somebody ought to give God praise right now. I don't hear you stand all over this place uh, and begin to lift up your voice in the presence of God. Uh, the miracle worker is in this place. Uh, the one that gives salvation is in this place. Uh, the one that gives new beginnings is in this place. Somebody give him praise right now. to bow your heads and close your eyes right now. Let's be today and tomorrow. Home is what I need. Let's be today Lord, your love 
Yeah. Hey. 